Mustafa Biodon. So we want to continue from what we started in our last class. So do we, let me just do a recap of um, what we did in our last class, which has to do with our projectile motion. So you have all the it was the necessary things on that. So I don't think I'll need to like venture much. I'll just like do a little recap of what we did. So projectile, as you all know, is an object that undergoes what we call what projectile motion. And as a matter of fact, you all know that the projectile motion is what is that motion that, that describes what we call the parabolic movement of an object, or also the what the motion of what of trajectory of what of an object. So in the real sense, I told you that what we define projectile as an object in which when it is launched into space, it is allowed to move freely by itself so under the influence of what we call what acceleration due to gravity and air resistance. So we have um, what's it called projectile motion consisting of what we call what two independent motion, which are what the constant horizontal motion, which is what the x plane, and what we call the what the vertical motion of what of free fall due to gravity. So those are the two independent motions that what projectile motion consists of contains. Now we talk about what we call the time using what in projectile and last week I used what we call the what the two independent motions was to explain those terms. So I told you that what the constant horizontal motion consists of what we call the what the horizontal range or call the range and as well and as well as the what the maximum range. Why the vertical motion of free fall due to gravity consists of what we call the what the time taken to reach the maximum height the horizontal the what we call the maximum height reached the time of flight and the what and the vertical velocity. So for the one of the constant uh, horizontal motion, it also consists of what we call the what the horizontal velocity. But today we want and I you know like derived their respective formulas for you. So today we want to venture over to another aspect of projectile motion, which has to do what we call what equation of trajectory. Equation of trajectory. But before I move into that proper, let me just write that or list out the words. Those formulas that we use in what the projectile motion as I proved them to you last week. So the first one called what the horizontal velocity. Let's start with that. So U x. So that is expressed as what as U cos theta, the horizontal velocity. Now the vertical velocity U y is expressed as what as U sine theta. That is the second one. The third one, the time taken to reach the maximum height. I told you what that means. Or where it is located in the what in the projectile graph, it is expressed as what as u sine theta all over all over g. So you also talk about what what the time of flight, which is expressed as what as twice the time taken to reach the maximum height, two u sine theta all over g. That's the fourth one. You have what what the maximum height. So the maximum height attained that is expressed as what as u squared sine squared theta. All over 2G. So we also have what we call the range. The range R is expressed as what? As u squared sine 2 theta all over G. So we also talk about what the maximum range when our sine 2 theta is equal to what? Is equal to 1. So our maximum range is expressed as what? As u squared all over what? All over G. So it requires that for you to have a maximum horizontal distance, which is the maximum range, the maximum range here, yeah? our side theta must be equal to what? 1, which implies that what? Our angle of projection theta must be what? 45 degrees. So that means the angle between the what? The initial velocity and the horizontal must be equal to what? 45 degrees. So now we want to eventually work on what? Equation of trajectory. So the equation of trajectory. Now, we all know that what? A projectile motion consists of what we call what? Two independent motion. So they are what? They are the constant horizontal motion. Constant horizontal motion, which is the what? The x axis. And what we call the what? The vertical motion of free fall due to gravity, which is what? Which is the y axis. Now, the two independent motion are those parameters that we are, that we are going to use to what? To like derive, or let me say, bring out that equation of what? Of trajectory. What do I mean? We all know that what distance is a what is a function of what we call the what the x y plane. Because in the real sense, what I you know, I try to tell you this. I tell you that what distance can be used synonymously when it has to do with unit and dimension. Distance can be used synonymously as what as displacement, as length. No, the basis is length. As length, as breadth, or what we call width. As what as altitude, as height. As diameter and as radius. So those are the words, those are the expressions that we can use what that we can use to qualify. Those are the expressions that we can, that we can use to what to qualify the what the basis for what 
for the dimension and what and unit of what of length, which is in what the unit in meters and the what the dimension in what capital letter L. You understand? So now the point is we are not going to what derive an expression for what we call the equation of trajectory based on the what on the x y components, which are the what the two independent motion that what a projectile motion exhibits. What am I saying? It is on the you know, when you talk of coordinates, you always talk about what, what the x coordinate and the what and the y coordinate. Though the x coordinate is called the abscissa, while the y coordinate is called the what the ordinates. So it makes what we call what the points where an object can be located on the x y coordinates. But the point is, we can attribute just each of those planes. One, um, okay, let me just bring this to We can attribute each of those planes, x plane, y plane. To one of the equations of motion to get what we call the equation of trajectory. And that equation happens to be what? The last equation of motion that I gave you, which is what? S is equal to what? Ut plus 1 over 280 squared. Why is, it that? Why is it that equation? The reason is because all other equations, the first, the second, the third, they contain or they consist of what we call the, the final velocity, which ordinarily is not, is not needed the word in projectile motion because you know that what? The final velocity is always what? It's always equal to zero. Because when you throw the object up, the final velocity at the word, at the maximum height is what? Is zero. But we also need to do what we call the, the initial velocity of the object. So it implies that what? For the fact that the first three equations of motion contains the parameter v, which is the final velocity, it implies that what? We just make do with what? With the top, with the fourth, sorry, with the fourth equation of motion, which does not what? contain the parameter v. So you now recall. So you recall from our fourth equation of motion that our what? Our s is equal to ut. Plus 1 over 2 80 squared. No v. No v in this equation. So you have what called what? S, which is what? The distance. Or well, sometimes you can use it as what? As displacement. So we have what called the initial velocity, the time, and the acceleration. No final velocity. So now, don't forget that I told you that what? Those two independent motion that what? A projectile motion consists of or contains are, are, is what we are going to use. Fundamentally, to derive the what the expression for the what the equation of trajectory, it implies that what the expression for what for the distance, which is what s, not what represented using what each of those what each of those uh, independent motion, the constant horizontal motion, which is the x-axis, and the what the vertical motion of free fall, which is what which is the y-axis. It implies that what the plane x plane will be what will be tied in deriving an expression. A particular expression which ordinarily what will apply in solving any form of question in projectile motion which might possibly be the word the range don't forget that what the range is the what is the horizontal distance covered which might possibly be the what the range or the time of flight because the what the range is the what is the x component the range is the x component so that is an expression that you derive for the what for the x component will be what ordinarily used in what in calculating the range and sometimes what the time of flight, the range and what the time of flight. Why for this one now? The expression that you obtain for what? For the y component will be used to calculate what, what, what? the maximum height attained, the time taken to reach the maximum height, the time taken to reach the maximum height. And uh, which other expression do we have again? Okay, I think that. So, majorly these two. So let's go on now. Our x is equal to the unit plus one over two eighty squared. Now, let's consider the what? The first independent motion, which is what? Constant horizontal motion. For, for the constant horizontal motion, don't forget, you are talking about what we call what? Horizontal plane. You are talking about what we call what? The horizontal plane. Now, for the constant horizontal motion, it implies that our, our distance s will now be equal to what? x. Don't forget. x plane. You are not talking about what? The x plane. Plane distance. So that means our distance s will not be equal to what? Our x. Now our our velocity u will not be equal to what? U x because we are talking of what? Horizontal velocity u x. Am I making sense? The velocity will be just the velocity that we know which is the initial velocity and this is the angle of projection. It will be the velocity because the velocity cuts across the what? The x plane and the y plane. But in this case, now we're talking of just what? The constant horizontal motion, which cuts across what? The x axis. It implies that what? Any expression on the x axis can be tied to what? To, you understand, to derive the expression for the what? For the x plane, which is what? Constant horizontal motion. So our velocity u will now be equal to what? u x, which is the horizontal velocity. 
Also, we also know that what? Our acceleration is supposed to be G, which on average should be negative G. But the point is that there will be no what? Acceleration needs to be gravity for what? Horizontal motion. Well, the of horizontal motion, no acceleration needs to be gravity. It's the only vertical motion that I can go, that I can go down of all what? The acceleration needs to be gravity. But in this case of horizontal plane, because of horizontal motion, there's no acceleration needs to be gravity. Because in that case now, the always is just acting horizontally. And don't forget, anything that's to do work with this form of motion, you, you don't always express what? The acceleration as A. You always express the acceleration as what? Acceleration due to gravity. So in that case now, the acceleration due to gravity will be what? Be to zero. Because like, you don't have any what? Acceleration due to gravity. Am I making sense? So it plays that what? The expression S is equal to UT plus 1 over 280 squared becomes, look at what? Because now what about s? Our s is equal to what? x is equal to what are you? Our u is what? ux times our time, our time t plus plus one over two. What's our acceleration? Our acceleration is zero times t. So it implies our what? Our x will not be equal to what? ux times t plus zero. That will give us what? Ux. See, so that's our expression for the what? For the constant horizontal motion. Invariably, it implies our what? Our u x, our, our x is equal to u cos theta times t because we know that what? Our u is u x is equal to what? U cos theta. So it implies our what? Our constant horizontal motion x will now be equal to what? U cos theta times our t. Now that t here yeah, ordinarily is the time of flight, but I won't say I won't I won't separate or let me say I won't make a distinct form of t in which this is as opposed to the what to the one of the what uh, vertical motion because I don't want to cause any what any problem of you know, you know understanding which one will be time of flight which one will be what it's time taken to reach maximum like so for that reason I will just suspend that for now. So this is what the force which is a constant horizontal motion the constant horizontal motion. Now let's go to the next one, which is what? The vertical motion of free fall due to gravity. So the vertical motion of free fall of free fall due to due to gravity. Now our S for that becomes what? Y. Vertical motion. Vertical motion. So our S becomes what? Y. So in the real sense, our U we know will become what? We be equal to what? U Y vertical velocity, which will be equal to what? U sine theta. That is that. Now our acceleration will be equal to what? Negative G because the object is acting against the Earth's gravitational force for what? For a vertical motion. When you throw the object off, it is acting against. Again, because the earth gravitational force is acting downward. Now, you're not trying to get up such that what the earth gravitational force is not acting against it. It implies that what the acceleration due to gravity will not be what negative in that case. So, now let's move on. So, our A will not be equal to what negative. So, it implies that what our S is equal to ut plus 1 all over 2 at squared becomes okay. Let's go. What's our S? Our S is y. That means our y. We now be equal to now what are you? Are you is u y times our time t plus one all over two? What's our a? Our a is what? Negative g times our time t. Now let's move on. It implies that what? Our y. We now be equal to our y. We be equal to what? U y. U y times t. Look at ui times t now our plus times minus will be what minus so that will be what minus one all over two g t squared minus one over two g t squared but don't forget that our, our ui is u sine theta so that's our what our y now be what what u sine theta times t minus one all over two g t squared so this is the expression for the what for the second form of motion, which is the what? The vertical motion of what? Of free fall due to gravity. Now the equation combined, or let me say the two expressions combined now form a single expression. 
And that simple expression will now be called what? The equation of trajectory proper. But mind you, when you want to solve any question, you, you make it a what? The equations separately. Separately. This separate. This separate. But the combined form of the equation is now called what? The equation of tra trajectory. Where is that what? You substitute our what? Our ux. Sorry, our x into the what? Into the our expression. Or you substitute, you make things out of the formula here. Yeah? You now substitute what? Our t in form of what? x and what? You constitute that into that what? Into the second equation, which is what? The vertical motion of what? Of free fall due to gravity. What am I trying to say? Now, this is the second expression like I told you. Now the equation of trajectory now become look up. The equation of trajectory. Don't forget I told you the combined equation of the two. Now, if you recall from our one, I told you that what we derived that our, our x is equal to what? Our x is equal to u cos theta times t. So here yeah, we can make this other formula. It depends on what our t will now be equal to what? X all over u cos theta. So you've gotten the expression for t. So you cannot substitute this t into this expression for y. So you now substitute, let's make this one asterisk asterisk. So this one other is supposed to be equation 2. Because the first one is equation 1. I made that one equation 1. So let's make this one equation 2. So substitute, you now say substitute asterisk asterisk into equation 2. So that means you substitute this one into this one. That means anywhere you see to what you put, you put u cos theta. Anywhere you see to you put u cos theta. The plus are what? Our y will now be equal to what? U sine theta, U sine theta times our T. Don't forget, our T is now what? X over U cos theta times X all over what? All over U cos theta minus 1 all over 2G. Now, 1 over 2G T squared. So our T is what? X over U cos theta. So that goes into brackets X all over what? U cos theta all squared because it is T squared. So it implies that what? Our y will now give us here, our u can cancel u. So that we now have what? x sine theta all over cos theta minus 1 all over 2g. Now let's express this one. Let's expand it. So that will give us what? x squared all over u squared cos squared theta. Am I making sense? Now you know from our trigonometric structure, okay, let me just combine it so that we don't just. Now we know that what? If you recall from trigonometry, we know that our, our sine theta over cos theta is equal to tan theta. Is equal to tan theta. Also, this is just like saying 1 over cos theta. So we know that our, our 1 over cos theta in our sample is given as what? As sec theta. So if you want to like make the word expression simple. So that means what? Our y will now give us what? X. Now, our sine theta over cos theta is what? Is tan theta. That will be x tan theta x tan theta minus 1 all over 2 so gx squared gx squared okay all over u squared times 1 all over what? cos squared theta that is simple math that is simple math so I have to separate 1 over cos theta out of what? out of the expression gx squared I brought that together all over 2 u squared I brought that together Okay, g x squared over u squared, okay, it's still the same, times 1 over cos squared theta. So, we know that what? 1 over cos squared theta is what? We give us what? Sex squared theta because this one expressed twice. 1 over cos theta times 1 over cos theta. So, that gives us sex theta times sex theta in what? In two places. And sex theta times sex theta will give us what? Sex squared theta or what? Sex theta all squared. So, it implies that what? Our expression now becomes what? Y is equal to what? X tan theta. Minus gx squared all over what? 2u squared times 1 over cos squared theta will give us what? Sec squared theta. So that will give us what? Our y is equal to x tan theta minus gx squared sec squared theta all over 2u squared. So this is the expression as well called the equation of trajectory. So don't forget, we also have an important, also have something we can manipulate here. What is that? This is square theta. Also from our study of trigonometry, we know that our what? 
We know that our sine squared theta plus cos squared theta is equal to 1. Is equal to 1. So if you divide through by what? By cos squared theta. I want to do something. All over cos squared theta. All over what? Cos squared theta. So this one will go, which will become 1. So sine theta over cos theta is tan theta. So squared, that will be tan squared theta. So tan squared theta plus 1. We now give us what? Okay, I told you that our one, uh, 1 over cos theta is what? Is sec theta. So 1 over cos theta will now give us what? Sec squared theta. So sec squared theta. So it implies that other way, anywhere you see sec squared theta, you can also put what? 1 plus tan squared theta. So which implies that what? Our exponent can also be written as what? As y is equal to what? x tan theta minus, okay? Minus gx squared all over 2u squared. Let's interpret that. gx squared. All over what? 2u squared uh -huh. into bracket 1 plus tan squared theta. So, or the former one, or the previous one that I proved for you. So, this equation, this one, asterisk, 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 and this one, 2 asterisk, 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 can be tagged up for the what? The equation of trajectory. So, don't forget, when you want to solve any question, so you use the what? The expressions separately. So this one for the what, vertical motion of free for due to gravity, and this one for the constant horizontal motion. But the two combined is now called the what? The equation of trajectory, which is what? This, the second one that I proved, and this, which is the what? The first one. So this expression, equation of trajectory, equation of trajectory, this one, and as well as what? And as well as this one. So. Uh, that is on um, the computing part of what of projectile motion. So um, afterwards, um, I expect that um, it will be nice if that after all this proving, 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 we will not solve the question. I've prepared like five different questions from Y. I told you always expose yourself to Y questions. Y is not is not hard. It's not hard. There's nothing in Y. Even I do see and likes. We see all these ones. questions that relate to all these things that. So if that you know what you are doing, you what? You be serious and what? And just you know, clear everything you want to clear at once. So because once that you know it, what you know is yours. Nobody can take it away from you. So if it's that you take your time, you sit down and what? And read over all these things. You know them. You know them. It's not. So those are the question of trajectory. And don't forget those are the questions that I proved for you last week. Let me come back to them. Okay. So the horizontal velocity. Vertical velocity, the time taken to reach the maximum height, the time of flight, the maximum height attained, the range, the maximum range, and the angle for the maximum range must be what 45 degree. To cover the maximum horizontal distance, the angle of projection must be what equal to 45 degree. So now let's now move on to the what to the questions that I prepared for you. So the, the questions that I prepared for you, okay? So trial questions. So they are all what why questions. So this is what y 2018. So it's a theory question. Right? So you can also by now going of 2019. The first question I have with me is 2019. If you go to 2019, you see still questions on projectile motion. So I think the questions that we have in 2019 is we have three of them. Three questions that I have to extract from just 2019 alone. Projectile motion. Now the problem, the question says that what a missile is projected so as to attain its maximum range. A missile is projected so as to attain its maximum range. So for you to attain what? A maximum range, it implies that our, our angle of projection theta must be equal to what? 45 degree. So the missile is projected, you project this missile with the missile's initial velocity, do it, they give us the value, and it is what? It, it produces what, what? A maximum range of theta which is equal to what? 45 degree. So a maximum range. So now said calculate the maximum height attained. Now the h maximum attained if its initial velocity of projection u is what 200 meters per second. You are given the initial velocity. We are told that what it attains the maximum range. You know that what the angle of projection was 45. You are told to what calculate the maximum height. Let me get my calculator. My calculator. So I will need that. So let's go. You know that our formula for maximum height attained is expressed as what as u squared sine squared theta all over 2g so you are giving your u to be equal to what if i'm not mistaken i think 200 yeah? so 200 meters per second so our theta is what is 45 degree and don't forget our g is always a constant you know that so our g 
is approximately what? 10 meters per second squared. In the real sense, it is 9.7 something, something, something. But just that the number after, or the digit after that something is what is greater than 5, that can easily what, approximate what? The 7 to 8. So you see what is 9.8. So that 9.8, so you want to approximate to the nearest whole number, that will give us what? 10 meters per second squared. So we don't really bother ourselves, say 9.7, no, 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 you don't need that. So the approximate value, no, you'll be giving me the question. You'll give me the question. So it is what? 10 meters per second squared. So that is our, our maximum might be equal to what our U? Our U is 200, that will be 200 L squared sine. Don't forget, I told you that our sine squared theta is the same as what? Sine theta L squared. So sine squared, so what is our theta? Our theta is what? 45 degree all over 2G. Our G is what? Is 10. So let's do our 200 squared, okay? I expect it to have a calculator with you also. Our 200 squared, so that will give us what? 40,000. So 40,000. Okay, 40,000. Sign. Okay, don't let start writing sign again. So our sign 45 is what? Is okay, let me press that. Sign 45. Okay, sign 45. So that is 0 0.7071. Now but the point is don't forget I told you sign theta is sign square theta is the same as well, sign theta was squared. So after getting sign theta, you have just squared. So that will give us what? Times, you let me write the sign again. Times, our sign 45, 45 is 0.70, 71, all squared. Sign squared theta is my sign theta squared, no time. All over 20, because our 2 times 10 is what? It's 20. Our 2 times 10 is 20. So let's move on. So that's our what? Okay, something can go. 2 here, sorry, 0 here, 2 here, 1, 2 in 4 is 2. 2 here, 0, 0. So that gives us 200 times. Now, what are 0 0.0071 0 all squared? Let's get that. So, to be honest, if I said, though, we have um, the numbers like 8 decimal place or 7. So, let me just approximate to 1 decimal place because I have 0 0.49999041. So, let me just approximate what? To a decimal place. That will give us what? 0 0.5. So, all over 1. So, all over 1. So that will give us what? 200 times 0 0.5. So that will give us what? 100. The unit of height, meter. So that means that what? Our maximum height attained is what? Is 100 meter. So that's that. So you are true with that. Okay, let me just go back to 0 0.70710 squared. The way it is, I use it to multiply our 200. So that's to give us uh, 99.998. So when you are that, that is what? 100 meter. So let's move to the next question. This is also, like, like I told you, it's also a wide question. This is a, an objective question. The one I'm just doing something is a theory question. So it's theory. So this one is more of theory, but this one is objective. So this one says that uh, if football is kicked at an angle of 45 degree to the horizontal, 45 degree maximum range, you should know that, to the horizontal over a defense line up, with a velocity of 15 meters per second, velocity, initial velocity 15 meters per second, you have to calculate the magnitude of the horizontal velocity. Look at horizontal velocity of the what? Of the football at its maximum height. Let's analyze the graph. Maximum range, angle is 45. Isn't it because what? It up, it, like, what's it called? It is here. Maximum horizontal distance traveled by the object. So they said 45 degree to the horizontal. Don't forget. Okay, let me just bring this to you. Sometimes, like, give the angle to the vertical. Sometimes, no, you know, most cases it's always to the vertical, horizontal. But sometimes they'll give it to the vertical. Maybe if you say 45 degree to the vertical, don't forget that what this one's all called what a quadrant, 90 degree. So just what you just do is what you subtract the angle given to the vertical from 90 to get what the angle given to the what horizontal. Because the angle you use is the angle to the horizontal. Don't worry, the angle to the vertical. You understand? But if they give you this one to the let's say, let's say for instance, 30 now for instance. Okay, sorry. This one to the vertical, 30 for instance now. You know the one you need is what the angle to the horizontal. So that means you subtract that 30 from 90, that would be 60. So to what? To not an angle of projection. So that is that. So with the velocity u of 15 meters per second. So velocity is 15 meters per second. You have to calculate the what magnitude of the horizontal distance. Look at the horizontal distance of the football at its highest point. This is the highest point. Now the what? Horizontal. Velocity at the maximum height. Don't go and mistake it for vertical velocity, like I said. 
horizontal velocity at the maximum might be two, it will still give us what? Horizontal velocity. Now, we know that what? Horizontal velocity ux is given as what? As u cos theta. So, you don't need to be told that I've proved that for you. So, what about u? Our u is 15. Our u is 15 meters per second. And our theta maximum range, if I'm not mistaken, that is 45 degrees. Our theta is what? 45 degrees. So, that's our what? Our horizontal velocity will now give us what? 15 cos 45 degrees. So, that gives us what? 15 times. Now, what's our cos 45? Let's go. Cos 45. Okay. That gave us 0 0.7071. 7071. Or we we'll 2 over 2. It's not 4. So that's our what? Our u x will now give us what? 15 times 0 0.7071. So that gave us what? 10 point... 10.6065. So you can just leave your answer in one decimal place. So that will be approximately equal to what? 10.6. What's the end of velocity in meters per second? To one decimal place. So maximum you can just go two. But one is here, it's good there. So you, uh, you uh, want to leave it into that was 10.61. So you don't need that. So now let's move to another question. So this is also what 2018. So the question says that what? A body is projected with an initial velocity u. A body is projected with an initial velocity u. Because when you are going to solve any question on project, I always draw your graph. Because it doesn't take anything. So at an angle theta to the horizontal, if our mass, okay, that means the angle of projection will be 45 degrees. So because it covers what a maximum horizontal distance. And what's wrong with them with this analytic question? Why is it a maximum range? So because it covers what a maximum range. So deciding how mass is the maximum range of the projectile, what does the relation u squared over how mass represent? It implies that this. Cool. So it implies that what our r maximum will now give us what u squared over g. So they were asked what this what u squared over r max represent. So that means if it is a cross multiply, our g times r max will now give us what u squared. So that our what our g will now give us what u squared all over r max. So in this case now what is g? Our g is the what acceleration due to gravity. So that means our u r over r max represents our what our acceleration due to gravity. So what you have to u squared by r max. So that represents our acceleration due to gravity. So let's move to the next question. This one says that what a bed a bed, a bed a, at a very uh, party sorry not party at a very party. Comma. The celebrant pops a cut foot wine. You know, say this is a 2016 question. So, if the cup shoots out of the bottle at an angle 40 degrees to the horizontal, cup shoots out at an angle 40 degrees to the horizontal. Initial velocity u shoots out at an angle 40 degrees to the horizontal and travels the horizontal distance. That means that what horizontal distance range is what 4.5 meter. So I'm trying to result that this part of 4.5 meter in 1.25 seconds. That 1.5 seconds will be the, what, the total time taken because it's the time taken to what to complete the what, horizontal distance. So that will give us what the time of flight. That will give us what 1.25 seconds. So you're going to calculate the what the initial speed of the cork. The initial speed of the cork. So the initial speed u is what you're trying to calculate. And don't forget, in our expression for what for range, I told you that what. We, I use the expression velocity is equal to what? Distance. Don't forget, the user is, is displacement. But I told you, you can use them synonymously. So, distance over time. So, here we are talking about what we call the what? The horizontal distance. The horizontal distance. So, it implies that what? Our velocity will give us what? Horizontal velocity, ux, is equal to our distance. That's what? The distance, horizontal distance cover. That will give us the what? The range. All over, what was the time? The time will not be the, what, the time of flight. That is the time taken for what? For the object to complete what? The motion. So if you cross multiply, it implies that our, our range will now give us what? Ux times t. Ux times t. So in this case, we can get our what? Our ux. That means our ux will now give us what? R all over t. So you are giving the range. The range is um. The range is 4.5 meter. The time of flight is 1.25. So range is 4.5. All over 1.25. So you can get what? Horizontal velocity. 4.5. 4.5 divided by 1.25. So that gives us um, 3.6. So 
So 3.6 meters per second. That's what horizontal velocity, not the initial velocity. The horizontal velocity, let me do that again. 4.5 divided by 1.25. So that gave us 3.6 meters per second. And don't forget that what? Our ux. Our ux is expressed as what? As u cos theta. Because the question states that what? You should obtain the what? The initial speed, not the what? The speed, horizontal speed. We are to obtain the, what, the initial speed u. So you know that our what? We've gotten our what? Our horizontal speed. So you can just what, get to what? Your distance from here. Our horizontal speed is what? 3.6. That gives us what? 3.6 is equal to u cos. Now, what's our theta from the question? Our theta is 40 degree. So that will give us cos 40 degree. So that means our what? Our u will now give us what? 3.6 all over cos 40 degree. So that gives us 3.6 all over. Now let's get our cos 40. Our cos 40 degree. What does that give us? So that gives us 0 0.7660. So 3.6 divided by 0 0.766. 766. Okay. So that gives us um, 4.69. Nine seven. So you can just leave that in one decimal place. So approximately 4.7 meters per second to one decimal place. So that is the one initial speed for that. So now let's move on to the I think I prepared five questions. We solved that many now. I can't remember. Okay, okay, okay. This should be the fourth question. They said the tennis ball projected at an angle theta at this range r is equal to this. Okay, this is the fifth. So I prepared six questions. The velocity imparted to the ball by the racket is this, is that 30 meters per second. Calculate theta. So you are giving your range. Though you you can draw that. So you are giving your range 78 meters. You are giving your initial speed 30 meters per second. So you have to calculate our, our angle of projection. So don't forget, our range is expressed as what? As u squared sine 2 theta all over g. So, what's our range? 78. So that gives us what? 78 is equal to, what's our u? Did they give us u? Yes, 30. So that would be what? 30 all squared sine 2 theta all over our g is 10. So if you cross multiply, so 70 times 8 is what? Yeah, 70 times 10, 78, sorry, times 10 is what? 780 is equal to our uh, 30 squared is what? 900 sine 2 theta. So that means that what? 780 all over 900. We now be equal to what? Sine 2 theta. So let's move on. 780 divided by 900. So that gave us um, 0.866. So that means that what? Our uh, sine 2 theta. Our sine 2 theta is equal to what? 0.866. So in this case, now you take the sine to the other side. So our 2 theta will now give us arc sine of 0.866. So arc sine, that will be the second function sine of 0.866. So that gave me 59.99. So that is 60 degree. Approximately 60 degree. So that means our, our theta, we divide through by 2, will now give us what? 60 degree all over 2, which is equal to what? 30 degree. So we solved like five questions. I think we have one on left. So we might not be able to solve that today. But let's just go through the question. So he said, um, okay, this is still explain it's this thing. A projector is released with a speed of that and an angle theta to the horizontal. We did on the diagram show that the time of flight is equal to that. You should be able to do that because I did that for you last week. Though we still touch through it in our next class. We are just what? Acceleration of free flow. So in our next class we want to continue with this and some other aspects. So have a nice day.